Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Alyssa Marie, welcome. So today we are talking about hair density, and I have to be real with y'all because I've been natural almost two, actually it's almost three years now, three years in December, and I literally have not taken density into account at all. So of course you know, as I've learned it, I gotta come right here and share the knowledge with you. So I really think that this might be something that's a little bit game changing. I genuinely think it's really important to know. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. We're gonna dive right in to the deep end. All right, so what the heck is hair density? And it's real simple, okay? Hair density is just referring to the amount of hairs that you have on your head. Simple, plain, that's it. So if you have high density, you've got a lot of hairs on your head. Those are more of the hair types that you kind of tend to call more thick, more big hair. On the opposite side, there is low density, so you don't have as much hairs on your head, so your hair can tend to look a little bit more thin and a little bit more flat. And then medium density is obviously kind of like a normal average amount of hairs on your head. So there are two things that knowing your hair density is actually really gonna impact, and that is your hairstyle and your actual haircut, and then also the type of products that you use. So first, let's talk about haircuts and hairstyles. So for my low density girls, since your focus is usually more on increasing volume, you're gonna wanna go for cuts that are a little bit more blunt and also that have shorter layers kind of towards the top. It's really gonna help to kind of increase the amount of volume and body that your hair kind of has. So I personally have come to the realization that I am medium to low density, even though I've always like considered my hair is big, super curly, and super thick. It is actually, in fact, medium to low density. So that's why I feel like this style, you know, with my shorter layers here and my bangs and stuff, it has really helped to increase the amount of volume in my curls, which I absolutely love. Now on the opposite end, for somebody with higher density, your hair is already thick, honey. It already has all the body that you need, and sometimes you might even find that it's a little bit too much volume for you. So what you can do in terms of your haircut and your hairstyle, you can make sure that you go for longer layers. When you have longer layers, your hair is gonna kind of weigh itself down a little bit more. So you'll still have your natural, regular kind of volume because your hair is still, in fact, high density, but with the longer layers, it's going to kind of cast it downwards a little bit and just kind of just bring it down in general. Like my high density girls are gonna be the ones whose hair like grows up and out for the longest time before it actually grows downwards. Cause like especially for curly hair, when you have a lot of it, it's just going to be boom, like out there, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Embrace it, love it, but if you are, trying to kind of cut down on the amount of volume, long layers will definitely be one option for you. So like I mentioned, another reason why it's important to know your hair density is because of products. Products are going to be huge. So for my low density peeps, of course, like I said, we're focusing more on trying to increase volume as much as possible. You're gonna wanna use a lot more lightweight products. And again, like after I started really getting into hair density, I was like, wow, like you guys have heard me in my other videos, I prefer lightweight products. My hair just seems to prefer it, it just likes that. And that is lo and behold, because your girl has medium to low density hair. When I use leave-in conditioners that are too thick or gel, that are like too crunchy and just too hard for my hair I find that my hair will literally like sit like this for the first two days and it will take a lot more time for it to fluff get a little bit more frizzy and then that's when I'll be able to achieve my volume but lately I have really been working hard and trying to figure out how I can get my wash and go to look right and to look really good on day one and that's definitely by using lighter weight leave-in conditioners and lighter weight gels and if you guys have seen my latest wash and go routine, you see that I've been loving the Wee Dad gels so, so much. And that's because their consistency is so light. My curls are still able to just breathe and be nice and fluffy, you know? And I just feel like that gel just works really well. So I would personally recommend for you, if you do struggle with really low density hair, this is definitely a gel that you should really check out. I 110% recommend because you're still able to get the hold, but without it weighing down your curls. It's like the perfect recipe for low density curls. Now on the opposite end for my high density peeps, you should definitely be going for the thicker products 
the heavier, more jelly kind of like stronghold gels, like those are going to be your best friend. So for me, I still really love Curl Maker for my hair. Like I said, I am medium to low, but for my high density girls, I would definitely suggest that you use Curl Maker fully on your head of hair. In my video, I showed that I only kind of use it as a finisher, otherwise it'll be a little bit too heavy for me. But my high density girls will absolutely love it because it is so good for hold and it will really kind of control your super thick high density hair. You'll also maybe want to go towards leave-in conditioners that are a little bit on the heavier side, a little bit more buttery and like kind of a little bit thicker in consistency. Because you have so much hair, I would also suggest that when you're styling, you use smaller sections. For me, sometimes I can get away with like just two sections, like one half and then the other half and then that's kind of it. But for my high density girls, I definitely recommend you really make the sections even smaller on your wash and goes to make sure that you're actually coating every single hair with products. By doing bigger sections with high density hair, you are missing that, like those middle hairs, like right in the middle, the product is not gonna be able to get all the way in there. So you just wanna make sure Take the time to smaller sections and you might find that your wash and goes are looking better than ever. For my medium density peeps, you really don't have to stress too much one way or the other. You can kind of just go the way I've been going and just really listen to your curls and figure out exactly how you like your hair to look. So now that you know exactly what works really well for super low and what works really well for super high, you can then decide based on your personal preference of how you like your hair to look to do whatever you wanna do that will get you to achieve that look. My main kind of goal for this video is that if you have been struggling with volume, maybe you have low density and now you know what you need to do in order to combat that. Oppositely, if you have just been struggling with too much hair on your head, you feel like it's too much, it's too crazy, your wash and goes aren't coming out right, now you know what you can do to maybe fix it and get it a little bit more under control. So with all that in mind, I need to also tell you guys how the heck to determine what your hair density is. And it's really easy, it's not as complicated or like weird as some of the hair porosity tests. So there's really two kind of easy ways. The first thing is to kind of just shake your head, you know, and let your hair fall where it may. And if you can see your scalp, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but you know how you can always see like my scalp really naturally here? That is kind of one sign that you have more lower density hair. You do kind of part your hair as well. You can look and see, you can see my parts look quite large. If you're more medium density, you may still be able to see your scalp, but the space might not be as large as it is here. And then if you have really, really high density curls, you might not even be able to see your scalp at all. Or if you do see your scalp, it's a really, really thin scalp line that you do see. So that's kind of one super easy way that you can determine what your hair density is. The second way is also another easy way. So you just go ahead and kind of try and clip your hair back, just even in your hands, honestly, into a ponytail. So I mean, you can see here, so the base of my ponytail, like my hair can go really tight, if that makes any sense. So the base of my ponytail was actually kind of about this small. It's crazy because, again, I feel like I have really big hair, but when I really go and put it back into a ponytail, it can really go really, really small. So the smaller the base of your ponytail is, is the lower density hair that you have. When you have a lot of hair on your head, it's not gonna be easy to kind of clip your hair back up into a ponytail. So you might find that your circle is like big or like, girl, I can't even clasp my fingers together. That means that you probably have a high density hair. It's kind of crazy for me because I feel like I've never actually thought of my hair being slightly on the thinner side, like never. Cause y'all see, like it's, it's, she's got volume, she's pretty big, but when I did all the tests and I, you know, I look at my scalp, like this is always there. It's actually hard for me to hide this. When I do my wash and goes, you guys have seen in my wash and go videos where I literally just shake my head and then the part is like already kind of there and that's like a huge sign of lower density hair. So even though you might feel like, you know, my hair is big so I gotta lather some like heavy things on that, that might not be the case and that might be why you're not achieving the results that you wanna achieve. 
So basically, this is going to affect how you approach your entire natural hair regimen. It's really gonna help you figure out exactly what you need to do in order to get the results that you want. And that's it, that's basically it for density. Nothing complicated, which is what I really love about it. It's not complicated, but it's definitely impactful. You know, like it can definitely make a difference. If you guys have any additional questions for me, you can always go ahead and comment below. Actually, you know what? When you do your little hair density test, Comment below and let me know what your hair density is. I'm kind of curious to see like what my other curly girls are dealing with. Are we mostly high over here? Are we mostly low? Are we mid to low? Kind of like what I'm dealing with. Let me know below. I'm super curious to see. I hope this really helped you out and that you found it super useful. If you did, go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. Just consider you know, hitting that subscribe button. We have lots of fun over here, okay? Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.